Well, good morning and welcome to our breakout session. You have chosen wisely. This is the disease management in corn. I'm Marika Patton. I'm going to be the moderator this morning. I'm territory sales manager in central Ontario. And I um, just a couple of housekeeping items. There is going to be a QR code later on in the session that you can scan if you're collecting CCA credits. Also, I'm going to be drawing for a set of heated gloves at the end of the session. And thirdly, please enter your questions into the Q&A there. I'm going to be tracking those and I will ask it of our speakers um, at the end of the session. So with no further ado, I'm going to introduce our dynamic duo of speakers here today. We've got Anne-Marie Van Whaley, and she's a market development rep managing a commercial research program covering part of Southwestern Ontario. Anne-Marie has been with Bayer since 2015 after completing her bachelor and master's of science in plant agriculture at the University of Guelph. Outside of Bayer, she resides on the family poultry farm in Huron County with her husband and two young children. Joining Anne-Marie this morning is Bob Thurwall. He's market development agronomist for Bayer. He's been with Bayer for 27 years. His focus is on corn and soybeans, but he also leads the cereals crop team for Eastern Canada. Bob's a CCA member in Ontario and has an agricultural production management diploma from Centralia College. In his spare time, Bob enjoys camping, fishing, and spending time with his family. So take it away. All right, thanks, Marika. And welcome everybody to the session this morning, Disease Management in Corn. Thanks for spending the next 30 minutes with Anne-Marie and I. We're gonna go through a few things here this morning. So we're gonna talk about leaf and ear diseases in the corn crop in Ontario. We're gonna spend a little more time on tar spot and how we see this disease is kind of changing the game and the way we manage our corn crop, um, including some trends that we saw in 2022. I'm gonna mention a little story on field view and how it helped to uh, help me to identify a disease in one of the field trials that we did a couple of years ago. And then we'll finish up with some of the field trials that we've done both internally uh, with, uh, with some field scale with our customers, as well as some industry experts that have done some work as well. So, so we'll jump right in. We're gonna go through some corn leaf diseases. Northern corn leaf blight is one that I'm sure you're probably familiar with. It's been one of the leading leaf diseases in the corn crop for the last 20 years or more. And it's very uh, easy to identify. You can see those brown lesions on the leaf. It's uh, elongated. We usually call them cigar shaped. And it typically spreads from the lower canopy up to the upper leaves. And typically this disease can start to show up sometimes around the end of July, usually into the first part of August. But it's one that can uh, continue down the canopy, cover those leaves and again, photo, uh, reduce that photosynthetic area of that green tissue. Um, luckily, we have good fungicides available to us in Ontario that could help con control this crop and Delero complete certainly one of those fungicides. Gray leaf spot is a disease that we do see periodically from time to time in Ontario. It's not one of the major ones, but we saw this one come in in 2021. Um, a couple of years ago when tar spot came in hot and heavy too. And, and so gray leaf spot, um, you can see on the lesion on that leaf, it's kind of that narrow, longer um, lesion that will show up. It typically stays between the veins. So it's typically elongated. And uh, again, another disease that typically spreads from the lower canopy to the upper leaves. It's usually a disease that will show up mid to later in the season. So typically in Ontario isn't a big yield robber, but if it starts to cover the leaf surface can certainly be a concern. And another one that our fungicide application can help to control. Common corn rust, this is a disease we're also familiar with. We see a little bit of this every year. We're starting to see some Southern rust come into the corn crop here in the last two or three years, which can be a little more of a concern, but it's typically those red rusty uh, raised lesions on the leaf surface that you can see there. And uh, again, can cover that leaf if it gets, uh, if it comes in early. And certainly again, fungicide will help us control this disease. High spot is another one that we typically see every year, really not a big yield robber, but it does cover the leaf uh, if it comes in early. It's those small circular lesions. If you hold that leaf up to the sunlight, you can see that little ye yellow halo effect. And uh, again, another one that, that starts in the lower leaves. 
And all of these leaf diseases are really favored by the, uh, the Great Lakes Basin, whether we get the climate, you know, cool, hot, hum or, uh, hot and humid primarily, and uh, lots of leaf wetness, which helps to spread these diseases throughout the crop canopy. Um, and again, another disease that uh, Delera complete is very effective on. But tar spot is really the hot topic these days. And we've seen this come in, was first identified in Ontario in uh, October of 2020. We started to see it. We said, okay, it's here. Is it gonna be a big deal to us? In Ontario, our U.S. colleagues have been wrestling with tar spot since 2015, and it really came in um, in a big way in 2021. And there's there's different stages of infection. Um, <clears throat> Albert Canuda in his trials, he's found tar spot uh, in the first to second week of July in the last two previous years, and that's really like any disease. If it comes in early, that's when we really have to watch it and manage it appropriately. So you can see the picture on the left there, there's a few little black spots. That's really just early infection. So if we look at the middle leaf, you can see that's later in the season, some pretty heavy infection there. It's probably 30 to 40% coverage of that leaf and really can start to interfere with uh, the photosynthesis of that, that corn leaf there. And if we look on the right in that close up, you can see those black raised postules. It's very, uh, very indicative of that tar spot. It's different than any other disease you'll see. And if you try to wet that leaf and rub those lesions off with your finger or your thumb, those leaves are not gonna go away. Um, <clears throat> otherwise, you know, if it does rub off, it could be rust or it could be insect frass or even saprophytic uh, fungi. And then you also see the eye spot there, that circular lesion um, the, or the fish eye uh, lesion with the circular, uh, around the black spot there, which is another form of tar spot that you can see. If we look at the movement of tar spot in Ontario, as I mentioned, was first identified in October of 2020. And then the yellow area on that 2021 slide shows how it came in to Ontario, spreading from Windsor all the way into Niagara, north of Toronto and up into Bruce, into the Bruce Peninsula. What was most important about the movement in 2021 is how early it came and how prolific it was. So it really had some yield robbing effects in 2021. And then if we look in 2022, <clears throat> it's evident not only in Ontario, but also in the US, where you can have it in the, in the previous year and it's in the residue and it can overwinter, but it doesn't always present itself in the crop. So in Ontario in 2022, you see it only spread maybe about two thirds of the way to where it was, was found in 2021. And that's what we've learned from our U.S. colleagues that tar spot really can can change uh, year over year. The pressure and probably the most important thing to watch for is when it starts to get established in the corn crop. I want to go through a, a few of our important corn ear diseases and just talk about these briefly. Gibberella ear rot is one I'm sure you're familiar with. It's one we never like to see in the corn crop, but it's that that uh, typical purple <clears throat> reddish type discoloration beginning in the ear tip and sometimes uh, you can see that the husk is really tightly bound to that ear tip if we get moisture into that ear it, the the tight the tight husk will hold that moisture in there and the disease can develop <clears throat> it's favored by cool humid weather and it really starts with silk channel infection that, that's why it's so important the timing of your fungicide program if you're targeting uh, any of the ear molds is to protect that, uh, that crop at, at green silking. You still have live silks. Um, and gibberella, of course, is one that will produce mycotoxins. And it's one we really want to be careful of uh, when we're shipping corn out to the ethanol or any of the, the end use elevators. Um, and it's certainly a concern. And again, good news, we've got good fungicides and we can help to reduce the uh, the effects of gibbera by using the Lero complete topped up with with afrid proline and again spray at that green silk timing fusarium ear rot is another disease we see uh, hit hit in this in ontario it's another one that can produce mycotoxins so we want to be concerned with this one too we want to watch um the uh you know the husk type on these on these uh, hybrids we're growing you can see the starburst pattern, your left white streaks that are on the caps of the kernels on this one. And it's another one that, uh, similar to gibberella, can be 
um, increased by by ear tip feeding. So whether that's western mink cutworm or even bird damage, if we can try to reduce those those types of pest problems, um, then the chances of getting that secondary disease infection is reduced, as well as using appropriate fungicides to control them. A couple of other uh, ear diseases we have in Ontario, uh, sometimes otrichoderma is another one we see. This is the one where you have the dark green fungal growth between the kernels. And it usually occurs again on, on ears that can have some uh, insect pressure, insect damage, whether it's bird feeding or western mean cutworm. Um, it's not a big disease in Ontario, but sometimes we do see that and cause, can some, cause some concerns for quality. Diplodia is one of the more popular diseases we see in a year when we get, um, I've seen it with drought stress, or if you get some ears that have some tip back on them, you'll have a little shorter ear and not filled out as well on the tip but you'll have a regular sized husk and you can get a tighter husk at the end of the, at the, end of the ear tip. Uh, moisture can get trapped in there and you can see that white fluffy um, disease on those seeds it can start in the butt of the ear or sometimes it starts at the tip and goes towards the middle, but it can cause um, lighter test weight. Luckily, this one is not mycotoxin producing, but it, it, it can affect uh, the ultimate corneal your crop. And then the other one is aspergillus. Again, not a, not a really, uh, big disease in Ontario forests, but it's that greenish yellowish discoloration between the kernels and again can be uh, accentuated if we get tight husks um, and another one we want to we kind of want to watch for. So just a quick little story here on field view it's something I experienced with one of my field field scale trials um, a year ago and I thought it was a good way to show just how uh, we can use field view to help us to identify differences in the field. In this case, um, we were doing a field trial with a grower um, with the Lero Complete and the half rate of proline applied at the R1 silking timing. And this, uh, this screenshot in field view was taken 51 days after application. And so this was the field trial we had. It was somewhat similar to trials we had with my agronomist colleagues and it's a split screen on field view showing on the left hand side the application map of that fungicide. You can see the crosshairs are in the untreated check strips. There's a couple of strips in there. And I've even got one little sprayer miss. I identified the grower um, didn't have the sprayer on for just about 50 feet there. And then interesting in the imagery uh, picked from September 16th. So I was looking through my trials on field view with my customers and I happened to, this one really jumped off the page at me. We saw a real big difference in the biomass on that uh, satellite imagery on, in the middle of September, certainly in the untreated checks, and you could even see that sprayer mess. And uh, so I said, okay, hey, this is a field we've got to get out to. We've got to have a look. What's going on here? And so I was able to go into the uh, grower's field view account in his field and take a couple of pictures right in the field and attach some field pins and identify those areas where I took the pictures. You can see on the left-hand side there, where I'm in the untreated check with no fungicide. You can see uh, you know, pretty good desiccation of the, of the mature plants there. You can see lots of tar spot on there and that's what the, the disease that was making the difference in the, in the imagery pictures. And then on the right-hand side, in the area where Delero Complete plus the half rate of proline was sprayed, you can see just a little bit more life in there. There's, there's still a lot of tar spot that came in late, but just a little more green in that plant, and maybe uh, that, that, that disease would just held off long enough to make a difference. So what's the real story? What's the payoff for the grower? Well, by spraying that, that application of the layer complete with a half rate of proline, he had some significant yield increases. You can see again, the crosshairs are in that untreated check. And if you look at the arrows and the difference in color on the yield map, you can really see um, that there is significant yield loss in those untreated strips. And with the, the fungicide application, we gain uh, between 24 and 31 bushels per acre. So that was, uh, that was in 2021 when Tarkspot came early and uh, really had a yield effect on those untreated checks. So now I'm gonna flip it over to Anne-Marie. Anne-Marie, take it away and we'll talk about some of the field trials we've done. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to switch gears and we'll talk more product specific. So we're going to talk a little bit about um, Delero Complete and touch on ProLine as well. So
So what is Delero Complete? What's its secret? Why is it so great? So we've combined three modes of action to create a very powerful chemistry that allows for great control of diseases. So these three products are prio, prio, Thioconazole group three, which moves relatively slowly throughout the plant, but has longer residual than most group three fungicides. It also has better post infection properties than the group seven and group 11 modes of action. The second active is trifloxystrobin, which is a group 11. It provides broad spectrum control of a number of diseases. It also brings that plant health characteristics that you're used to seeing from fungicides. And finally, we have fluopyram, which is a group seven. It's highly plant mobile and provides a lot of residual protection. It works different than the group three mode of action. So it's a great complement to that group three fungicide in this um, in Delero Complete. So the characteristics of these three modes of action that brings the consistent performance that you're used to seeing from Delero Complete um, our excellent disease control spectrum with these three products, um, preventative activity, it has some curative activity. We see systemic movement of the product throughout the plant. There's also additional movement ability of the product, has increased plant health and greening and a very long residual. So Delero Complete is registered on a number of crops, but for today's presentation, we'll just focus on corn. So the diseases that we have labeled for control in corn are common rust, southern corn rust, eye spot, northern corn leaf blight, gray leaf spot, and tar spot. In terms of application timing, we have two, two timings that we focus on with Delero Complete. So if you're applying for improved leaf disease, um, we're labeled from the one leaf, um, one leaf corn up to VT, with the focus usually being around the VT stage to hit those um, leaf diseases that you're trying to control. When we're trying to control leaf diseases and dawn, the timing would be VT um, into the later R stages with our recommendation being for the R1 stage so that you hit um, both leaf and dawn timing. Did that advance? Did that advance, Anne Marie? It looks like Anne Marie has frozen. Bob. Has we has Anne Marie frozen? Okay, you want me to continue on? Yeah, please. Okay, if she jumps back on, she can interrupt here. So this is just a chart showing uh, some of the uh, market development agronomist field trials we did, similar to the example that I showed there in with the field view field. And these were fields where we sprayed uh, Delir Complete plus ProLine at the half rate, at the R1 silking timing. And this is a compilation uh, for yield in 22 field scale trials. And you can see that we gained 11.4 bushels over the untreated checks in those trials across Ontario and Quebec. And then in 13 of those fields, we were able to uh, collect corn samples and check for dawn. And we could see <clears throat> quite a reduction in the dawn with that addition of the proline or the prothiaconazole. And you can see by that red bar where the dawn is on the untreated compared to the Delero Complete plus fungus, uh, proline fungicide application. And so we see um, close to a 50% reduction of suppression of, uh, of dawn in the green crop. This is another- um, Back over if you want. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so in. here um, we uh, took those trials that uh, Bob was just explaining from the field scale. And we've also conducted small plot trials over uh, the last three years. Well, probably way longer than three years now, but um, this data is from the last three years. So from 2020 into 2022, and we have a total of 51 locations um, where we compared the untreated versus Delero Complete Plus half rate pro line. And in these 51 trials, we found an average of seven bushels per acre increase over the untreated check um, with the Delera Complete Plus half rate pro line. 
So in 42 of those 51 locations, so 82% of the locations, we saw a positive yield increase with the application of fungicide. Then we took it one step further and looked at the economics of this. So we took into account the price of fungicide as well as the price of corn and calculated that we needed about five bushels an, eight, uh, an acre increase over the untreated check with the fungicide to have an economic benefit. And this was seen in 70% of the field trials. So this means 70% of the time it pays to spray. So this is some external work that was done by the Crop Protection Network in 2021 um, in trials throughout the Midwest and Ontario. So in these trials, they were looking at an untreated control versus a number of fungicides that are available on the market for control of tar spot. So this graph on the uh, Y axis, you're looking at the percent tar spot severity at R5. So this is the amount of tar spot that is covering the leaf. So in the untreated control, we're looking at about 26% leaf coverage. Um, and then we have the number of fungicides on the X axis. When we look at Delero Complete, which is the third from the right, you can see that it had the best control of um, tar spot in these trials. In these same trials, they also took them to yield. And again, you can see the untreated control had 207 bushels an acre. And when we look at Delero completed is again, the third from the right. And it had the highest yield, which was 18 bushels an acre over the untreated control. So really controlling that tar spot allowed us or allowed them to get 18 bushels an acre over um, not spraying or not controlling the tar spot. So it really does make a huge difference to control the tar spot um, early in the season to keep your yield. So I'm sure a lot of you have seen this slide before. It's research done by Albert Tenuta and Dr. Dave Hooker um, in Ridgetown or the Rodney area in 2021. And this graph is set up on the X axis or the bottom axis, there is the percentage of leaf coverage of tar spot. So the further to the right a product is on the graph means the higher the um, coverage of tar spot on the leaf. And then the further up on the graph or up the uh, Y axis is the higher the yield. So you can see the no fungicide is here in this bottom right hand corner and that means it has the lowest yield with the highest incidence of tar spot. So where you want a product to be or where you want to choose a product from to control tar spot is that top left hand corner. And you can see that Delero Complete is right up there in that top corner. So we've created a similar graph to the previous slide looking at our internal um, sites where we were able to collect tar spot data looking at our fungicides. So across 21 and 2022, we had six locations where we were able to collect tar spot data. And in this case, we have a different rating for tar spot. It's on a one to nine scale where one is there's no tar spot in the field. And then nine would be the plant is completely decimated. So again, in this bottom right hand corner, you see the untreated um, control where there's um, the lowest yield with the highest tar spot incidence. And then Delero Complete is right up there in that left-hand corner indicating, or top left-hand corner indicating that it had the best control of tar spot with the highest yield. So we created a similar graph taking our data um, from the last three years, so 2020 into 2022. And we've taken any sites that we were able to get DAWN data on um, with fungicide. And we had 17 locations where we had data from our sites. And we looked at DAWN, the same setup and graph where we have yield versus DAWN and you have parts per million of DAWN. And again, this untreated control is in this bottom right-hand corner indicating as the lowest yield with the highest DAWN incidence. And then ProLine is in that top left-hand corner. So this means that ProLine is showing the highest yield with the lowest DAWN incidence. So if you're worried about DAWN in your field, definitely spray ProLine and tar spot would be Delero Complete. So do a application of Delero Complete and ProLine to get your best results. 
All right, <clears throat> great summary, Emory. So just to finish up here with a couple of slides, there is a tar spotter app that uh, Albert Tenuta and the team that he works with with the Crop Protection Network is, is developing. Um, they're continuing to val validate this tar spotter app using uh, climate modules and forecasting modules. It's also um, being used uh, from the framework that has been set up. You may be familiar with Comcast in tomatoes or, or Doncast in cereal crops. So it's similar framework uh, and using models from those, those platforms. So it's one that's easy to use. You can put your own field in the tire spotter app and then we'll kind of run the models once you get into uh, in the July timeframe in August and see what the percentage risk is for those uh, for the onset of tire spots. So something you may want to have a look at uh, through this, the summer season. So just to finish up in the summary, so the layer complete delivers a gold medal performance for overall disease control and yield results. And uh, the layer complete can be applied as Anne Marie mentioned, you know, at the VT timing. Some of you in the north uh, may be just concerned about leaf diseases, whether it's tar spot or northern corn leaf blot, leaf blight, or any of those. You can spray uh, uh, Delira Complete on its own to control those leaf diseases right up to, to VT timing or tassel timing. But if you're in the southern part of the province and more concerned about the humid conditions, you can apply at R1 again at that green silk to, to protect that crop from the uh, silk channel infection, where you would apply Delira Complete plus the half rate of proline to have enough prothioconazole in there. Gives you best in class leaf disease protection as well as ear mold protection and dawn suppression in your corn crop. So think about the layer complete for best in class protection against tar spots to maximize your corn yields. So that's all we had. I wanted to just leave a little bit of time for questions here. Marikas, I'm gonna pass it over to you. See if any questions came into the Q&A. And while we're going through the questions, I'll put up the QR code here and you can scan that code to, uh, to log in for your CEUs. But thanks, uh, Anne Marie and Bob. I do have a question that's come in. Thank you, Josh. Um, is there any advantage to using a full rate of proline when Dawn is a concern? You've talked a lot about a half rate proline. Great. So that's a great question, Josh. Thanks for bringing that up. So one of the things with Delira Complete, Delira Complete at the at the regular rate offers a half rate of proline in that formulation. So it's a half rate of prothioconazole, and that's what does the heavy lifting to reduce uh, to reduce ear, ear molds and, and offers dawn suppression. So what, the reason we add a half rate of proline to Delira Complete is that we top that prothioconazole up to the rate that will equal the same amount as you would get if you use the full rate of proline. So that's really the reason we we add that top that half rate top up is to get the benefits of the components in Delira Complete, as well as enough prothioconazole for ear mold control and, and dawn suppression. Perfect. I also, um, that's probably actually all the time we have for questions, because I do have to announce the winner of the gloves, but if you have a last minute one, you can pop it in here. Um, Julian Papineau, you are the winner of the gloves. So thank you for tuning in and joining us here today. So somebody from Bayer will be in touch with you soon to get those uh, delivered to you and to keep your hands warm as you maybe go skiing or snowmobiling or, or, or something um, this winter. Um, actually, I do have one more that popped in here real quick, if you can answer it quick. Um, what's the strategy for managing tar spot as a new disease? Has the timing strategy changed at all from before? Yeah, want me to take that one, Avery? Sure. Um, so I don't think the timing has has changed. I think uh, the strategy strategy continues to be uh, spray early and be ahead of this disease. So one thing we've learned from our U.S. colleagues is that probably around that VT timing or that R1 timing, depending on the uh, diseases you're trying to control in your corn crop, that R1 tassel timing is still the best time to start with your fungicide control. And then you're going to get about two to three or four weeks of protection against tar spot. So that's that's what our U.S. colleagues have found over the last five or six years, and that's what we've learned in our Ontario trials here. That's the best time to start and be preemptive um, and get ahead of that disease before it 
comes into the crop and gets established. Perfect. With that, I am out of time. So I've got to wrap things up here. Thanks to our speakers. Thanks to everybody for joining and make sure you click on live sessions to go and see the panel now. So bye for now. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.